Hello and welcome to the CFT code. And uh, this is the a practical course in which we learn how to apply the CFD technique to solve the some industry level CFD problems or the fluidodynamic problems. And the software we will use are ICM CFD, CFX3, CFX Solver, and the CFD Post. We will cover these softwares in very detail like each option is discussed and the benefits and the disadvantages of the each and every option when to use them everything is discussed in this course after that about myself my name is Jal Ahmed and uh, I have been in this company since 2015 so here we have the introduction and uh, this course is basically is uh, divided into two parts. The part one will give you the overview of this course and the and the brief results and the brief brief results and the, some facts about the this course like the mesh is machine independent study and the results we, we get from the solution of the problem and in the part 2 we will solve the uh, one problem uh, I call this one as a model problem and this is a laminar pipe flow problem and we solve this problem using the the software we discussed just now that there are the ICM CFD, CFX3 CFX solver and the CFD post. So the part two is concerned with the detail and it's a step by step by step procedure adopted in the software. Okay, the next thing so this is this is what you will learn at the end of this course. Basis of the pipe flow, including different equations, solution of pipe flow equation, discussion of velocity profile, and the pressure drop across the pipe analytically. And this will be used when you solve the problem with the help of CFD, and then we will be able, able to compare our CFD results with the well known analytical data. And also, we will discuss about the friction factor and the skin friction coefficient. Next thing is that is very important is how you define your problem from the uh, very simple statement how you are going to define your problem in terms of uh, for example the geometry parameters the electrical flow and the flow properties so this is how we can define these all things from the very few data we know before solving the problem. So maybe we are given that the 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 ground number is equal to 500. This is all information we have with us. So we will cover these uh, softwares: ICM CFD, CFX3, CFX Solver, and CFD Post. And uh, not only we we'll cover them, but we will go into very depth of these all course, and uh, we discuss each and every step, and uh, from basic to the very advanced level. And the most important thing, or the most key point of this course, is that we will make you able that you can solve any problem of the fluid dynamics or for that matter for the heat transfer although we, we are not covering the heat transfer in this particular course but you can join us in our other courses which are on the heat transfer but the uh, what we are building here is a thought process that will be helpful to you when you solve any engineering problem and just keep in mind that these are the tools which you will use to solve your problem so these can be the any problem like a fluid dynamics problem or maybe heat transfer, multi-phase, maybe turbine compressor, etc. 
So you should be able to start from the scratch and then define your parameters based on some physical insight. And uh, from there, you should be able to define your problem in the, like you should be able to create geometry, its mesh, and then the, you should be able to set the boundary condition, the material properties, and solar properties, solar condition, then you should be able to post process result and should be comparing results with the known data. This known data may be as uh, analytical results or maybe uh, maybe some other CFD, maybe some like large area simulation CFD, or maybe it's an experimental work. This is how this course will be should be able to uh, uh, give you capability to solve any problem. So the first part we will have the overview about the course. So in the pipe flow, the flow is uh, for this case is, is a laminar flow because the knot number based on diameter is 100. And as, as we know that the flow is, uh, is laminar for the pipe flow, when the knot number is less than 2300 and it's a transitional means so neither a laminar flow nor the turbulent flow when the knot number is between 2300 and the 4000 and flow is a turbulent when the knot number is greater than the 4000 and the formula for knot number is equal to the density time velocity time diameter divided by the viscosity next thing we should know about the pipe flow is that we have the entrance length and second is a fully developed flow. The internal is a, is, a, is a length where the flow is basically establishing itself. And uh, initially when the flow goes inside, it, it has a uniform velocity profile and the velocity is constant everywhere. And because of the presence of the wall, it will stick to the wall and its velocity will be reducing and it's also disturbing the other layers which are adjacent to the this layer. So eventually what will happen that the, the boundary will grow and it will cover full pipe or the maybe the internal channel, full channel will be covered. And after this one, uh, you will see that the velocity change will, will be the zero. So we define the entrance region in the region when the velocity is still changing and the flow is equally developed when the velocity change in the x direction is zero and we are talking about the exit velocity only which is in this direction okay so uh, based on the definition we have the formula the velocity profile is changing along the x direction it's not changing along the x direction but it can change along the y direction so it means that the velocity is the only function of the Yes, but not the exit location. Okay, so uh, we have some empirical formula instead of uh, solving them and looking at their solution experimentally, we have uh, some empirical correlation which comes from the experimental data. That is for laminar flow, we can determine the entrance length by this formula equal to the point 0 0.05 times the Reynolds number. And for turbulent flow, this is equal to 1.359 times the diameter times the knot number power 1 by 4. So for laminar flow, the flow is fully developed very soon as it enters the pipe, but for laminar case, it takes the more distance to make it fully developed. And keep in mind that the, this, uh, this length is basically, uh, this formula is valid when the diameter is equal to one and keep in mind that the knot number is also dependent it depends on the diameter so this formula is only valid when we have the uh, diameter is equal to one but the time if the diameter is is not equal to one then this formula will be like this one so l by d is equal to 0 0.05 into the knot number based on the diameter And the L by D is the ratio where L is the length of the pipe and D is the diameter of the pipe. OK, 
if for example if the lot number is 10 then the l entrance will be equal to the 0.5 units and uh, we are assuming that the diameter is equal to 1 positive square and if the lot number is 2000 the l entrance will be the 100 units it's a very very large length so you can see that the, for the laminar flow we may need the very very large lens for the uh, flow to be fully developed but the CMDB is the advantage that we can use the, the velocity profile at the at the inlet of the pipe so that we should not be uh, obliged to solve the full pipe to make it fully developed so we can put the profile velocity profile which is uh, you can see here as an inlet parameter and this can save us the time and the consideration the resources. So for our case where the knot number is equal to 100, we have the L entrance is equal to 5 units. Okay, now uh, let's say if the diameter is equal to 0.5 and let's say we have the pipe like this. In this case, all what will happen is that that the L entrance is equal to the five units. So L by D is equal to basically is the point five. So the length will be equal to the point five into point five is the point two five. So instead of the point five is the basically is the point two five. So if if we look look at it length parameter on the along the pipe length so here is the 0.25 meter and in terms of l by d this is equal to the 0.5 the next dimension may be the let's say the the length is equal to 0.5 so here the diameter is a 0.5 so it means that the length will be equal to the sorry here if the length is equal to 0.5 okay so l by d will be equal to the 0.5 divided by the 0.5 is equal to 1 so here l by d will be equal to 1 all right so it means that the uh, we have the relationship between the L by D and the L. So L is 0.25 and L by D is equal to 0.5. And length is equal to 0.5, then we have L by D is equal to 1. And similarly, for the L is equal to 2, the L by D will be equal to the 4 because we divide the length by the 0.5. When length is equal to 4, this is equal to the 8. The choice of the length here. So we have the one, one scale is uh, is understandable by the flow and second scale is understandable by the human mind. So in the next slide we will discuss about the velocity profile.